Hello again and welcome to another episode of The High Techman. I'm your High Techman. I am Ken Chan. And today we are going to look at simple file sharing again. But this time we're going to be using uh, a, a different application. This application is known as FileZilla. One of my favorite one of my favorite applications of all times for, uh, especially for Linux. Um, now what I'm going to show you here is, is 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 meant for local file sharing, but you can also or uh, you can also use it for remote file sharing. If you have a friend that has a computer and they give you their public IP address, you can also use it to share files that way. And we're doing the simple file sharing. We're showing. Uh, I'm going to show you FTP, file transfer protocol. Um, nothing really complicated here. Okay, uh, I'm not a very complicated guy. <laughs> so, um, so the first things that we're going to want to do is we want to get these these things installed. We want to make sure that the computers that are on your network are able to be seen. Uh, by other computers, okay? We're going to say that the, the computer you're using right now is the one you want to grab files, okay? You want to use that one to grab the files from other computers, okay? So you want to make sure that your other computers on your network, actually it's a good idea for all your computers on your network if you're going to file share, um, to have these things, GKSU and VSFTPD already installed. Um, that's These are things that allow file sharing to happen. Um, and a lot of times you'll you'll say sudo app get install, and then these guys, and it'll say that it's already on there. Um, VSF TPD I don't think comes stock. You have to uh, even today still. Um, since my last video that I did about file sharing, we're using Gigolo and Samba. Um, I still th I think that you still actually have to ask to have VSF TPD installed. So. First thing you always want to do is, of course, get your update. Sudo app get install, uh, a sudo app get update um, on every computer that you have. Um, and then you go ahead and get these. And that sets you up, that gives you the basis. Then you want to create a Samba share. So you sudo app get install system config Samba. And sudo touch. Etc. Libuser.conf. If you can't see the Samba once you've installed it, now before I go any further, I'm talking about uh, right now. I'm talking about uh, certain distros. I'm using uh, Peppermint Seven right now, and I also use Zubuntu uh, 1704. Um, and those are the ones that I. Have. Those are my go-to distros. Uh, you may be using something else, but these are. You know, these are derived from Ubuntu. I'm an Ubuntu kind of guy. I don't like straight Ubuntu. It, I, I just never really got into it. But, you know, these are derivatives of... Uh, these are derived from Ubuntu. So it, it would probably work on Lubuntu as well and Kubuntu. Kubuntu actually has its own file sharing thing. I did another video on that. Well, I did a video looking at Kubuntu. I didn't really do talk too much about the file sharing. But Kubuntu has, it's a strange duck, it's something for you to look at, but this this will work on most of the Ubuntu derivatives. And the ones that are similar, uh, I would imagine it would probably, probably work very similar on Linux Mint as well. So, that being said, you want to get these things. Um, and get your uh, share going, your Samba share. You set up your Samba share the same way I showed you before. You open up your Samba. And you put in your password. You can't see mine. It's on my other screen. So. So I had that. I opened that on the other screen. I'm, I'm doing this two screen to, to, to avoid the clutter. Because I, I have a real mess here. <laughs> If I let everything go, so, and you set up your, your 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 share, you would go into whatever folder you have, and you would copy whatever share you want to make, and then you would go over here, hit the add button, 
and you have something that looks like this you'd put this in and you can change the share name whatever make it writable invisible access allow access to everyone if you're you know for for your home networking you're behind a router I would just set this up to allow access to everyone you do it any way you like okay we're gonna go ahead and cancel that though because I already have this set up so we're gonna get rid of this so and that's the way you set that up on the machines you want to share from the ones that you want to be seen and I would recommend doing this on all your computers as you know because if you want to file share you want to do it you know it's file sharing is just that it's sharing but you do it any way you like now we're gonna open up we after we've uh, of course sudo app get install filezilla you can also on most of the Ubuntu uh, distros you can find it in their store um, you can get it on a synaptic package manager uh, if you I, I'm gonna open up software manager here and I'll show you um, put in my password here we go we have our software manager it would probably be under internet but we're just gonna go ahead and search for it FileZilla. Give it a second. And there it is. And it's already installed. You just double click, start installing it. There you go. Boom. Done. Easy. So now you would have the FileZilla on there. So let's go ahead and open it and have a look at it. Now, host is the name of the server or the computer that you want to get into. You want to get into. Uh, another computer on your network and I'm going to show you that in a second username is whatever username you have on that computer password is the password you have on a computer port is going to be number 21 for file transfer protocol as it shows you right there SFTP is 22 but we're going to go with just regular old FTP quick connect now if I hit my quick connect it's going to show you a list of of um, IP addresses and one of them is a public IP address you can also use this to connect remotely okay to a computer that shared publicly okay so you need the public IP address for that and you can do that like that okay I have one on here I don't want to click this because I don't want a bunch of people seeing it and then deciding to you know I don't want to see what that guy has on his network um, I share files with someone. Uh, I actually share files with the Sub One Genius, and I'm sure he wouldn't like it that much if everybody got his, you know, his public IP address for his server at, at his at his at, in his apartment. So we're not going to do that. But you, it, when you when you enter a host, okay. And then you say the username. And you put in the password for that computer. And you say port 21. Okay, now before I hit this, I'm going to show you a couple things. Local site. This is where it's set up right now to, to uh, share to. And you can change this. Okay, you can just say... Um, well, we'll go into this. You can actually scroll through this, and you can change these windows too. Let me see. I'll pull this down here, and you can you can shift the size of these windows however you like. Okay. So let's go to let's just share this to. I don't know. How about documents? Okay, and it'll switch that to local site documents and that's that's where that's going to put anything that I that I download okay so remote site over here that's going to show up when I hit when I either hit this and hit enter I can put this in here and hit enter or I can hit quick connect which will put this if I hit this button it shows you my quick connect list this hitting this puts this on my quick connect Okay, now look at well, all this stuff that opened up here. Now everything that I have set up on the Samba Share on that other computer is now accessible. 
I'll make this window a little bigger. Okay, and, and there, here's the stuff. So let's go to pictures. We'll just say, okay, I want to get my tales of Zestiria wallpapers. Let's get the whole folder. So. We're going to go ahead and download. And it'll show you what's going on here. Down here in this window. Now I right clicked on that to download. So, and it gives you, um, it tells you all the, the pictures that I'm putting in here. And here it's showing up here. And it gives you status report up here. And it also gives you a kind of a status report down here. Same thing. So that's done. So now when I open up my folder. And I go to, where did I put that? I put that in documents. When I go to documents. Here it is. Even though these aren't really documents. Whatever. It's. It, it, you know, it doesn't matter. You put it wherever you like. Okay, but but you, you, you get the idea. Um, okay. Cool. So that's how easy that is to use. And now that I went and hit Quick Connect to connect this thing, it's now memorized on my Quick Connect list. So I can just go ahead and open the list and Quick Connect to that. It'll put in all the information for you. And it'll connect right to that as long as your network is, is set up and everything's turned on and et cetera, et cetera. So there you have it. And, and of course, it just shows you now it disconnected from server. It does at some point after waiting. It'll wait so long and it'll go, okay, I'm done. Boop. So there you have that. Um, it's a very handy dandy little uh, file transfer uh, program uh, application. I love it. It's one of my favorites. And that is that. So, thanks for joining me and checking in and seeing what it's all about. Don't forget to share and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.